Hi, I'm Dana. Welcome to Tools and Tips to Owning Your Worth. Not my journey, not my contract. I'm going to start today by introducing the tool. All right? Not my journey, not my contract. Okay, so we've established now I am an intuitive healer. Okay? I talk to spirit all the time. I talk to dead people all the time. All right? What I've learned, and you can go on YouTube land and find all sorts of confirming information, is that when a soul has chosen to come live a life, learn things, and hopefully raise their vibration, okay, they like choose their human, right? And they're born, and we have this life, all right? Your contract, your soul contract is created using your birthday all the way, like day, year, month. And then there's another piece of it that's the actual day. Those are numbers. And it goes all the way down to the time that you were born, to the minute. And then you choose your name at birth. So it doesn't matter how many times you change your name after, whatever your name at birth is, is another portion of your contract. We are born when the astrology is at certain points. That astrology makes up another portion of our personality, all right? Again, the goal of every life, the goal of every soul's life is to learn lessons, raise vibration, heal. Heal, heal, heal. Get closer to the light. Get closer to divine source, universal life force energy. That's the goal, okay? We have free will with a lot of things. We have a lot of things that we basically get to pick and choose, right? Like, I'm going to have this experience. I'm not going to have this experience. You know, that happens at a soul level. We also have free will in a lot of regards. But we also have things that are fated, okay? So, um... Those of you that are certain religions are going to have a hard time with this, and that's okay. You know, there's work to be done always. I'm just presenting the information as it's presented to me from spirit. There are things that are fated. There are points in our life, okay, when our soul sets up our contract. And our soul is like, well, if I'm going to have all this heavy stuff at the beginning of my life, then how am I ever going to, like, rise above? How am I going to find Dana on YouTube so that I can listen to all of her podcast or episodes and figure out all these tools to help me raise my vibration and heal, okay? So um, a lot of people choose to have a dark night of the soul. I have had them myself, I've had them myself, and I know lots and lots and lots and lots of other people that have had them. And again, that's just a phrase, it's a catchphrase, right? Um, that basically means the bottom drops out of your life. And you are at that point where you're, you're, you're given the decision, am I going to live and raise up or not? Okay, so most of those dark nights of the soul are fated. And we don't live on an island. We interact with people all the time. We have spouses, we have children, we have friends, we have enemies, we have coworkers. And those people play a role in our contracts and we in theirs. So this is where I'm coming back around to the tool. Let's use our parents or our children. We are born with a strong personality that is set a certain way to help us through our soul contract, through our life journey, all right? Just because we view things a certain way, just because we have had life experiences that have happened at a certain time, in a certain location, around a certain theme, does not mean that everybody we know is gonna have that same outcome, all right? I use this when people I love very much are making choices that don't align with their health and well-being. I will say to myself over and over and over again, I am not privy to their soul contract and I am not privy to their life journey. I do not know 
if this is a fated event or not. I don't know if their life contract has been set up for them to choose this and fall flat on their faces and then stay mired in the muck for a while so that they can raise their vibration eventually and get out. I don't know that. But it keeps me from over investing. It keeps me on the right side of compassion and it keeps me in a grace, mercy, forgiveness mindset. I can root for them. I can hold space for them. I can send them love and light. If we are in a place where we are communicating, I can you know, keep it at a, a higher vibration, our communication. But so many of us take on way, way, way too much. If somebody is supposed to fall flat on their face and have a bunch of bad stuff happen to them and you keep swooping in and trying to save them, guess what you're doing? You're delaying their misery. I know that's a hard message to hear, but all of you in enabling land and codependency land, let people live their lives because you just don't know. You could be delaying their growth, their love of self, their amazing outcome because you're, you're, you're um, getting into their, their detail way more than you should be. You're meddling, okay? Food for thought. Once again, I'm gonna say it. Not my contract, not my journey. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you to my subscribers. This topic is one that's near and dear to my heart. I hope it helps you. Thank you to all of you that this is your first episode. Welcome. I hope this really helps you too, so much that you subscribe. Please add comments. Please, please, please add comments. Keep the community going. I love that. And until next time, namaste.